Oh boy. Well, I think we can all see why I did not have Miami in my ACC title or not AC national championship title contender tier in my ACC power rankings. Right now, I'm not saying Miami's a bad team at all. In fact, I think Miami's a good team, but they did play a sloppy game today. It isn't um, the greatest look. Now, they end up winning the game, but did they really win the game? Uh, man, that ending was a disaster. Um, but on the you know record books, it's going to show that Miami won this game. Um, but the best competition probably they've played this year, I think Virginia Tech's better than Florida. Uh, they struggle. Cam Ward, what, throws two picks. Uh, I don't remember both of them. One of them was really ugly. He got baited into making a throw and um, almost came all the way all the way back. Um, also, shout out to Virginia Tech. You know, they go on the road, a top 10 opponent, and have a really good show. And that running back, Tootin, which is a hilarious name, by the way. Tootin? Who's going in? You, Tootin. I'm not Tootin. No, Tootin's going in. Um, yeah, absolutely hilarious name. Um, tough running back, man. Really tough running back for Virginia Tech. But really the point of this video is some, something I've been thinking about for a while, which is, is officiating just getting worse and worse and worse? And look, we all, when we're watching our team, you know, in our heads, at a minimum, are bitching about officials. And there are, you know, a handful of bad calls in a game. But at the end of that game, that, that went as bad for those officials as you could possibly have it. It was basically um, the Seattle Seahawks play from however many years ago, college football edition. Now, I don't, for the minute that official called that a catch, first of all, they didn't signal it forever. Miami, you know, doesn't even wait for the call. They're like, we're back, baby. Uh, hit the lights. We won. And there was no call. So that was dumb. But I do think at the end of the day, the call, what the result was correct. I don't think there was enough there to show that he caught the ball and control all the way. But here's the thing they called it a touchdown on the field. And my understanding of the rule, now I've interviewed an S, a 20-year veteran SEC official on the channel. Maybe I can reach out to him and maybe I can get some clarification from someone who isn't a mouth-breathing idiot like me. But my understanding is that you have to have irrefutable video evidence to overturn a call. And there wasn't that there right for that last play like there really wasn't anything meaningful you could pull from the from the replay to show that it was a catch versus no catch and per the rules they should have probably stayed with the call on the field now i don't think that's the correct call the point is that the official that called that a touchdown on the field painted everybody including the acc office into a corner where they had to make you know what's probably going to be a very controversial reversal uh, of what was a game-winning touchdown. Now that's going to be focused on what I'm uh, equally as pissed about is there was an absolutely awful phantom holding call that took points off the board for Virginia Tech. They hit a big run. This guy just absolutely beats his dude's ass blocking and pancakes him. Like, like he's a waiter at Denny's serving pancakes out there. Throws the flag. No holding to be found. Now, I know there's an unwritten rule in the college football uh, YouTube community that you're not supposed to bitch about officials. But here's the thing. Here's, here, here's something to think about. How many results of games would be changed if you took seven points off the board for somebody or six points off the board for somebody? Probably half of them are somewhere abouts there. Probably at least half of games are decided by a touchdown or more. That'd be some good research to do. So the point being, officials have the ability to change the, um, the outcome of games. Well, you shouldn't put it in the officials' hands. A lot of games come down to a touchdown, though. And to me, that 
that kind of changed the, dynam the dynamic of that game. You know, Miami does have a good defense. When you hit an explosive play and it's erased for no reason, for no fault of your own, I, I mean, that's just tough to overcome. It's tough to overcome. I mean, look what happened with the holding call on Miami where they scored, and then Cam Ward nearly throws a pick six, does throw a pick, almost comes all the way back. Like, these are huge things. So I would probably be more pissed about that call if I was Virginia Tech than the last call of the game. So here's my proposition. I think there needs to be some rule changes or rule clarifications. Now, it didn't come up in this game, but thinking back to the LSU-South Carolina game where, <laughs> was it Nussmeyer throws a pick, gets tries to make a tackle on the ball carrier, and then South Carolina end, ends up getting a rough in the passer for pushing them down and not allowing them to tackle the ball carrier. We need a clear... First and foremost, can you touch the quarterback in the pocket? Because half the time, even if you hit the guy with the ball in his hands, if you do it violently enough or with enough athleticism, then that's a roughing the passer call. I can't tell you how many times I've seen roughing the passer on just good football plays. Also, if you can't touch the quarterback after a pick, then he just needs to trot his happy ass over to the sideline and be out of the play. And then, you know, the defense that just intercepted the ball has an 11 on 10 situation uh, because it, it's a little bit ridiculous from what you can and can't do uh, from a defensive perspective with the quarterback. Um, also, side note, there's been way too many games this year where we can't get the freaking play clock right. Way too many. There was a point in that game, and it went against uh, Miami, or it hurt Miami, where the play clock, Virginia Tech has the ball, the play clock rolls under five seconds, and then the play clock resets to 25 seconds or something. So you've basically given... They, they blow the play dead. Now you've given Virginia Tech a free timeout. They already get an extra timeout and a half with the two-minute warning or two-minute timeout or whatever it is. Um, you got to be able to get that right, man, especially in, in close games that are coming down to the wire in the fourth quarter. If you can't get the play clock right and you give that team an extra timeout, that's total BS, man. It's almost like we've spent way too much time, effort, and money on like conference realignment and branding and TV deals and not enough focus and time on the actual game, isn't it? Almost seems that way. Uh, the other thing is I think in situations like the end of the game where it's not clear if it was a catch or not, um, like those plays need to favor the defense on the field. If you're a ref and you can't definitively tell whether he caught the ball or not, then it should be incomplete. It should favor the defense because the defense is already at a disadvantage because the offense knows what plays called, when the ball is going to be snapped. All the wide receivers know what routes they're running, so they have that advantage. So in a catch-no-catch -catch situation, I think the advantage should go to the defense. So I don't know, man. There's just been some <laughs> really – bad, badly officiated games this year. And I hate it because it's ruining the game. Now, I didn't even go into the whole UNLV thing. Uh, maybe I'll make a, a, a separate video about that soon. But it's just college football's changing, man. Like the, the game that I love, I've, I have to accept. It has changed irrevocably. And uh, it is what it is. So Miami struggles to get past Virginia Tech. I'd have to look at who they have uh, next week. But I don't know. Take it from Rec Talk. Don't get too far out there in front of your skis if you're a Miami fan because the truth is, up until tonight, you really hadn't proven anything. You really hadn't proven anything by beating a Virginia Tech team that's super underperforming. Um, yeah, you, you have all these massive margins of victory, but one is against what might be one of the worst Power Four programs in the country that's just waiting to sue – or not sue. Their coach is being sued. <laughs> Man, everyone's getting sued today, speaking about college football changing. But you beat one of the worst Power 4 teams in the country and two non-Power 4 teams like Florida A&M and um, Kitty Kitty Lick Lick State A&M or whoever you played before that. So let me know what you guys think. Um, 
What do you think about those calls? What do you think about some rule changes or clarifications just so we can all get on the same page? Let me know. Talk to you guys later.